It's just like so intriguing. The first moment you lay your eye on it, it's like you wonder what is going on here. What happened? So like uh, we're, we're lucky enough to have uh, our, our builder Adrian here and to talk about his build. Like like I I had questions. I had questions. Like where is it? What happened? All right, hi everybody. My name is Adrian. To be very honest with you, this is my first diorama that I ever built. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. You just have to envision an idea, think about it, and then just create it. So if you look at this diorama, it's actually uh, the red comet Zaku. It's painted in uh, red candy colors. He's actually on a mountain top, right, protecting his fallen Zaku in the green guy in there, um, while he awaits. Um, reinforcements to come and help them. So as you think about it, in war, there's always the bad side and the good side. War is always about suffering, about people killing each other, destruction, annihilation, all that. But in this, in this story, it's where you see friendship, where one guy is actually protecting another comrade who's actually fallen to the ground as he awaits help. So that's kind of the, the story that's, that's gone behind creating this diorama. And this diorama is actually created of natural products. So if you look at it, right underneath this is actually a baking um, plate. So my wife had an old baking plate that she didn't want. That forms the base below that. This particular uh, top here is actually a paper mache that was created to actually collect peanut shells after we finished eating. So I, we, we picked that and put it in here. <laughs> Then the whole thing was with uh, paper, mashed up, uh, and put with glue to get the solid uh, look. Then we started to go to our garden to actually pull out moss. So here is actually real moss from our garden. <laughs> right? Then it's actually kind of like half alive, half dead if you like. And it's all just stuck in there, while the other parts here are all uh, from the hobby store. Sorry, from the dollar store. This particular branch is from our, from our tree. So just by having uh, an idea behind it, you can just create anything you want. So that's the story behind this guy. Um, I've also been in this hobby, I'm very new to this to be honest, I only started in the year 2000. And I, my first kit that I built was actually the Stripe Freedom MG kit, can you believe it or not? And I was like, holy, sorry, shit. <laughs> right? It took me like a few, few days to do it, it's like, am I going to give up? But I thought to myself, I'm, I'm already into this, let's just continue. And I persevered and persevered and persevered and try and learn. And I have uh, one person to thank here, he's not here, he's Shao. He's from Edmonton, a shop in uh, called NII.GS, he's great. And I've been uh, getting kids from him and more, more importantly, he has been actually teaching me uh, techniques of how to paint, how to do things, what to do, how, and, and all that. And, and I just try and I YouTube a lot and that's how I learned. So, if you look at me, I'm not, I'm not young anymore. Gundam, <laughs> Gundam came out when I was like three years old, so you can guess how old I am. But with all of us, everybody loved this thing, but everybody thinks that it's not easy, right? Because even building Lego may not be easy. But if you try and put your, all your heart into it, you can do it, right? By, by being in a community like this as well, there's many people like Derek Mo. Joseph, many are Jess as well here. Yeah? <laughs> Everybody is willing to help, which is great for this community. Yeah? So that's just what I have to say, and hopefully I will inspire you guys, especially new guys here, any of you guys here, to actually push your limit, keep pushing your limit. My, my next thing is to actually build a resin kit, which is the, quite a, a next level, if I would say, uh, for, for building that club. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you, Adrian. All right, thank you so much. I have a question. Yes, yes, Mo. How long they have been here? Like how long to make this? No, 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 no. Like they are waiting for reinforcements, right? How long the red Zaku was waiting? Well, as, as you can see in this diorama, he's still waiting. So I, I don't have an answer for you, Mo. But hopefully, right? Another thing I would like to say that what uh, Kevin said just now. I am not a fan of Zaku's as well. <laughs> well yeah. You know, everybody starts yeah, with one thing to build Gundam. Uh, we have Sean here as well from Flamort. He's also very supportive. Please give him a big round of applause. Yeah. 
That's why we're there. He's the guy who's bringing all, all the kids here into Canada. Alright? Thank you, Sean. So anyway, uh, sorry, I lost my, my train of thought. So anyway, I don't like the Dakus. Everybody always starts with the, the Gundam first, right? Because he's the hero, right? But after a while, as you grow into this hobby, you know more and more characters, you definitely want to get this after. It just grows on you. It's just like that, right? Okay, yeah. thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Those fascinating stories. Um... Uh, I, I apologize. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you know what is going on here? So, for, for myself, it's not for everybody, but for myself, I always think of a specific way to build my dioramas. I always think of something that relates to myself. Um, like last year, if you guys were here, I did a PG perfect strike with a Zoid. Um, Dinosaur, Berserk Fury. The reason I did that one is the Strike Breed or the Perfect Strike is my most favorite kit. The Berserk Fury reminds me of my old dog, so I built them together to represent myself and my dog. So the title of that kid was actually a boy and his dog. So it worked out for me. So that, that's how I that's how I decide on how I build my uh, dioramas. It's just all about the creativity of what you guys choose and want to do. For me, it's just relate to what I enjoy and what I love. So my reason for this specific build uh, this year is growing up, Dragon Ball Z was my very first anime I've ever watched. So now I'll still watch it. I've watched this series over and over and over again every single year. So I'm like. Watching it this past year, I was like, I can do something different. This actually, I have to thank Derek and Alina for this, because they're the ones who gave me the idea. The little uh, Zaki you see right here, uh, when I first saw it, right away, right away, I knew what I wanted to do. I'm going to make a diorama. It, it, this, is, this is outside my comfort zone. As everybody that knows me, all my kids are a lot darker. So this is definitely outside my comfort zone of what I did. So it did take a little bit of while to figure out how to do everything, but Zaku's, I, I hate also, I'm not I hate Zaku's, I hate Zaku's. They're not my favorite, you know this. You know this. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? Gems are better, I don't. Who said that? Mm, we'll talk, we'll talk. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I've always enjoyed the fusion dance itself, so I took two Zaku's that are similar, just different units. So I posed them as doing the dance itself. And for those that don't know about the fusion dance in Dragon Ball, or Dragon Ball Z, sorry, they power up and they do a dance with a pose at the end. But if the pose isn't perfect, two things is gonna, is gonna happen. You're going to get really, really skinny and old, or you're going to get fat. <laughs> so again, thanks to Derek and Alina for uh, giving me the idea with this little guy right here. I jumped on the internet, and I bought a set for myself. So I'm like, okay, well, he's going to screw up, and he's going to become fat. Because for me, I screw up, I screw up my diet, and I become fat. <laughs> so it relates to that way. Whoa. I, I don't know why, I don't know why. Every single kit, doesn't matter, HG, RG, uh, perfect grade, master grade, it's, it's all the same. Don't, don't let the amount of pieces fool you and make you scared of how to build something. We here is a community. If you guys ever have any questions, we're all here to help. The admins of the team, we all have been building for multiple years. For myself, I've been building since the very first Zeta first came out, actually. So I haven't stopped. And then I grew up and had adult money and it got worse. <laughs> but yeah, so with this guy right here, because everybody was so afraid to build it, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do that. Just to prove that if anybody can do anything they want, they're just pieces, it's a puzzle. It's no different from building a 500 piece puzzle to a 1000 piece puzzle. In the end, you're gonna get the result you want, right? So I decided to do that, and what Mo was saying, one thing that can really motivate someone to build is if they're building not, not just something that they love and enjoy, but something they also hate. For myself, I hate the crossbow. I hate it 
so much. Why? It's it's loose. Nothing stands properly. Nothing is good on this. So you know what? So I'm still standing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I decided. You know what? The Sasabi, everyone fears. He's like Satan to, to people. You know what? He's the king for me. So I'm going to make him with a battle scene of sitting on his throne with his shield as the backing, with the crossbone sitting or laying down, and the Sasabi with his head being crushed. So that was my inspiration to do that because one, people are scared of the unit. I'm going to make it a bit more terrifying. Two, I use something I hated to make me feel better. <laughs> So yeah, that's the yeah. story for that kid. Oh, that's exactly slander. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not slender, bro. <laughs> Alright, 78-2 is the worst mobile suit of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, where to start with this one? Um, yeah, just go just go with it. I guess first I explain my background is in miniature painting and tabletop gaming. Yeah. 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 Any miniature war gamers in there? Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Um, I, so I've been doing that for a long time. I had to build my first gun in 2017, which I got from Odefest. Um, and it was, I think it's, it's 2021. I've been following this Japanese painter, Sanasuke, for a while and watching her hand paint the gun of kids. Thanks, bro. I realized that I could like yeah, thanks. take all the miniature painting techniques I've been doing for years and be like, oh, I can just paint the gun. You can see I'm not like very big bear. <laughs> so there's, that's why there's a bunch of edge highlighting and stuff. And I do like have an airbrush and airbrush. Uh, I still like usually use the airbrush on each project just for priming, but I find I'm very like uncomfortable with the airbrush and I've had like lots of negative experiences with it. And I'm just, it's just not my vibe. So. I chose to kind of double down and focus on the hand painting and yeah, it takes a bit longer to do, but uh, you know, that's fine. <laughs> it can take as long as you need it to. Um, and most of the, this was the first hand painted Gundam project I did where I was experimenting with doing freehand. Uh, designs all over it. Most of the stuff I painted over the last couple of years, I was more focused on glazing up gradients and like doing kind of maybe it's not that similar to like airbrush pre shading or post shading, but more just like taking that like miniature painting, like shadows and highlights, and putting it onto this scale. And um, yeah, kit bashing as well. This is kit, but it's mostly the high grade fusion from Iron Blooded Orphans. The shoulder pads from the high grade Gildu. <laughs> the arms and head are from the with the, the Delanza. The hammer for the Gushin, I added a longer handle to it because the Gushin, the Gushin's hammer is kind of awkwardly short, and I wanted to be able to have it pose in ways where you can where I can hold it with both hands and have it not look awkward. It's fine. It's always a challenge getting up. Uh, a lot of gunplay to like hold their weapon in two hands and have it not look awkward. Um, and if the as soon as you know I saw the Gushin for the first time, I was like, oh my god, I love that hammer. I need to do something with that. <laughs> uh, I guess next we can talk about the base on this. Um, it is glued to the base for a few reasons. Um, when you're and I hand paint with acrylic water-based acrylic paints, which is just kind of the standard for when you're painting miniatures, and and like the way I paint, I can't really see myself ever using lacquers or enamels, just cause like it's hard to mix them when they're not water-based. Um, but the, what, the water-based acrylics are a lot more fragile. And with these, this is where like the kind of crossover zone between miniatures and gunpla painting is a little, um, like there's a bit of friction because the Gundams have lots of moving parts. Uh, so like the elbow <coughs> joints here, uh, um, both arms are locked in place because just the way the panels slide and move, if I did keep that posable, like move it once and it would just scrape up a bunch of paint right away. Um, even, like I could try and make it work by sanding it down a bit, but uh, I hate sanding, so I didn't really <laughs> want to do that. And, uh, and then also, because it's glued to the base, I, if you haven't played like Warhammer or a game like that, you might not 
know what I'm talking what? about, but uh, they, well, you're moving, picking up and moving a lot of models across the table and rolling dice. And if this Gundam was just like standing on the base loosely, there would be a lot of like, okay, I gotta carefully slide this forward for its move. And it'll just like, there's just a lot of risk of it falling over. And uh, this one, this one's like a short and stocky kit, so it's like decently stable, but especially some of the other ones I've hand painted, it would be a total nightmare trying to like play a tabletop game of it without it being uh, attached to the base. And also when it's attached to that base, it makes handling uh, it during the painting process a lot easier. In like the, when I started hand painting Gundams, I didn't, I uh, glued 100%. more of the kits, but the more projects I've done, I kind of like even the see how much less gluing I can get away with. So, like the shoulder joints are still movable here, uh, the ankles are movable, the knees are locked, but the, the waist joints aren't. Is that culture, or is that is that belong to a particular race or group? Uh, yeah, I guess when they came to the freehand patterns on this, I had a few different sources of inspiration. I'd say the main one is probably like, um, like late medieval, early Renaissance, like parade armor that you would see like royalty wear. Like at that point in history, like knights wearing full plate armor on the battlefield was, a, was like going out of fashion because of gunpowder, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But there's still like lots of fancy suits of armor that were commissioned. And um, I think the first, all right, like in the Warhammer Fantasy Empire faction, they're kind of based off the Holy Roman Empire. And uh, so I think I saw a couple of examples of painted knights that had the armor that had like lots of detailed filigree in it. Uh, so I just, I studied a few examples of that and then just on a piece of paper just drew out a couple of, like similar designs that I think that I thought would be like easy enough to replicate because I'd never painted any kind of freehand patterns like this. I've done like a tiny, tiny bit of freehand on minis in the past, but nothing to the extent of this. So it's like, that is an inspiration, but I like toned down the designs of it so it would be achievable. Cool, very cool. Um, with also a few add-on pieces and modifications that I did make uh, as I was building it. And this one, this kit actually has pushed me to the point of building my own paint booth, which is actually almost double in size of, compared to this. Uh, and learning how to airbrush, there's a mix of airbrushing, hand paint, so much specialty stuff that I've been solely learning how to do. Um, like I hollowed out all of the leg cameras out, put clear plastic in behind it, holographic papers also behind it, give it more of a reflective surface, will make it look a lot better than the actual foil stickers that they provide. Um, and then yeah, just going through it slowly and doing little things here and there. It's been a project that I've been working on off and on for five years now. And I finally said it's going to be ready for this year's Olaf Fest. I'm tired of work looking at this thing not done. <laughs> and then uh, going, to, going on to the next thing right now, which is another peak end I get. And then eventually uh, I will have what they call the Hazel Rock completed. Uh, but that's going to be probably a couple of years out for that game. And then I'll do all the same modifications I did as I did on this one. But uh, yeah, no, the, the Hazel, when, it, when I first saw it in 2005 in the high grade, I fell in love with the design. Loved the idea behind it. Got as much information as I kind of could at the time, which was very limited. And then I've been building it and wishing for the, the Master Grade to come out ever since. And then when I crowned out with P. Bandai in 2017, I jumped at the chance at it and I kind of haven't stopped since. I have. So, just so you guys know this, <clears throat> a lot of our new and newer members have a huge tendency to buy P. Bandai. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Jess, Derek, Mo, we don't, have, we don't have the money to do that. <laughs> so when you guys jump on it, we're like, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> we have rent to pay. Oh, yeah, I came God. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, I just, I usually go throughout a year of buying stuff and then get it all shipped at one side of Japan is kind of how it's mostly <laughs> But always hoping that uh, Blamon will actually start bringing some of this stuff over. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, He's come gone. on. He's gone. Anyways.
Um, but yeah, so it, this has been a labor of love and hate. There's been some stuff that, you know, never the paint didn't work, peeled away, had to redo it several times before I finally got it right. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm just happy it's finally done and uh, able to be able to show it off finally. You did great. Thank you. This was inspired by the Balmain 2012 Ready to Wear collection. And I am, I am not joking. <laughs> Fashion. It was actually based off a fashion show. <laughs> it actually started totally different. I had a, I kind of wanted to do the like good versus evil uh, black, and I had this idea to like have a really like melty black side, and then it looked dumb. <laughs> um, so then when I saw this particular dress, it actually did inspire a lot of the work. I think my biggest tip is be creative with what you use. A lot of the little things I use, and I, I'm literally looking for things to use for Gumpla everywhere I go. Like if I'm at Dollarama, if I'm, at, I'm a makeup artist, so if when I'm at the beauty supplier, when I'm at like these kind of things, I always am thinking like, and very often this is entirely nail decals. It's nail tape huh. and nail decals, and that's how I got those fine lines. I did not tape, I did not mask all that. Um, I kind of cheated. I did mask down the center and I'm really proud of how perfectly even it ended up. But um, yeah, be really creative with what you use and what you find. And I think um, that's that would be kind of my biggest advice. But I have like a huge Pinterest folder of just like things that inspire me. And when I'm feeling kind of blah or whatever, I'll go through that. and be like, oh, this is kind of dope. And then it'll like come to me, okay, okay. Um, and I also hate airbrushing. <laughs> what? I know. What? I know it, it looks so good. I am just like, this is going to sound surprising, but I'm not a patient person. I don't even know it looks like I am. <laughs> this looks very patient. But I'm really not. So airbrushing is just like not my jam. So I, I do like the bases, and then I'll usually kind of do everything else. Yeah, that's that guy. He doesn't have, I can't even remember what kids they were. Um, well, obviously there's the, the uh, unicorn. Yeah, the banshee oh, head. Banshee. Sacrilegious. <laughs> uh, and then a couple other ones that I literally can't even remember. Because uh, this was a little while ago. I, I originally started doing this because it was a Canadian themed contest. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to do something like Canadian. Um, but then I hated it and left alone for a long time and then came back at it like way after the contest ended. Um, but same thing. I used a lot of stuff I found at like the dollar store. Um, all those little like blacks and kind of use different like I do makeup kind of techniques on it. Um, the thing I really love about this one is that I did all the panel lining in baby blue. Huh. Yeah, so it gives it like a cool kind of frosty effect. But yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So the entire store, there's the entire battle going on here. I was looking at this and was like, holy smokes. Can you share some detail with us? Like what is going on here? So basically, I got into Warhammer for a bit, little yeah. bit. And the first edition, guy. The first edition got me inspired because if you can recognize him, he is giving me points for you. <laughs> yeah, that's sure right here. Uh, yeah, and the thing is, the my two kits that I used were from a very old line before the Gundam artifacts, and that was the uh, two minutes uh, model kit, the really small one. Like the first one over here is the Shamblo, but I. I don't know why, but I watched one Iron Man movie and I was inspired, and that's where it went. Where it went wrong? It went old. It went wrong the whole, like, and that's where it went downhill from there. Uh, and then, yeah, I tried to use some for this one. What's happening here is uh, it's a chaos corrupted. Well, not exactly chaos corrupted, but chaos corrupted uh, Neo Zeon that's been locked away, hidden, and. Uh, uh, somehow managed to activate as soon as it found a threat that was uh, powerful enough. And so it picked up its uh, power mace and decided to attack it, whatever it was. And yes, this is one seven fifteen hundred scale from my calculator, but yes, that is... Yeah. Say, you know, there, people come in and people look at your perfect grade and it's like, oh, it's amazing, and then like, and then go right in front of me and it's like that. Eh? <laughs> I just walk away, you know. 
like I like I, I, I follow this guy Chris Nicholson from uh, he used to work for camera store review all the cameras now like he's he's like he's the one that made me decide which new camera I bought and then he come in and he took like 30 picture of that and then just like turn it off you know so I want to ask you to share some of your magic here like 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 what what what, what is the situation here? What, what what is it? Where it happened? How this happened? Situations like this. How long does it take to build? How long is a piece of string? <laughs> All right. There's a long story of this. This kit took me about equivalent to almost four and a half years to build. Yep. <laughs> I built it all and put it together and painted, and this is my first diorama last year. <laughs> oh my god. All right. So the story about this guy is actually he's actually in the sort of jungle savanna terrain style. Basically, he's a green astray. Basically, he's supposed to be like a well camouflage unit with the whole netting. He's just starting up. The LED that's on its head is pretty much dead, so I can't turn it off. But outside of it, this is the first time I did metal coating using Alclad. Took a lot. Every single inch of this guy is painted. And also, I used uh, foil styles, deck, well, stickers, we'll just say. Actually, I shouldn't say I did. My wife did. I love her to death. And she did help me <laughs> onto it. I would lose my mind. <laughs> All right, and yeah, basically the entire story, he just activated and he's ready for battle. He's all, basically that's the entire idea. I thank you everyone for giving me praise for this guy. But you know what, I see lots of amazing work out there. And you guys are my inspiration. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks, sir. You, 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 you're not done yet, I have a question for you. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so who set up those camouflage lighting? What do you mean? Do? Very hot questions, man. Derek Kidd himself. <laughs> I made those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like in, in the in the story. Like, in the story? It's just, it's just a story, right? Like they just it just literally crushed it. <laughs> so you know in Gundam Wing, you know, you have an awesome ace pilot that does everything by himself. Do you ever see a work crew with them? No. Okay. <laughs> Where's the ace pilot? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you, you for that? What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess I wanted to, to show my thought process on this kind of weathering technique. Uh, Gunpla for me is very therapeutic. It's a form of relaxation and almost meditation. Uh, a few years ago, my grandpa passed away. And uh, I took a lot of pain and frustration on I got no, I'm building gun plow. And I want to say that's illustrated through just how nasty looking this guy is. <laughs> he has like bullet holes and scratches. And take a lot of time sanding and stuff. So uh, I know a lot of people like to get technical about things, but for me, I just, I just want to say if you're building gun plow for the first time or if it's like, you know, in your 10th year, just like me. It is a form of art, and you should really take it as a form of, of your self-expression and be proud of yourself for building something, taking the time to express yourself. And just really happy to be a part of the community, and just thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yo, everyone had a blast at Odafest so far? Yeah. That's awesome. I'm very happy. I'm very, very stoked to see everyone here. It has been fantastic to see everyone. And especially this is our second time doing this. All right. Now, first I'm going to say my first little spiel because this is... I'm Derek. I am the Gundam team lead of this uh, for Odafest. You guys made my dream of making this uh, awesome, wonderful place as a community for everyone here to hang out all over throughout the weekend. I thank you for making this. Thank you, Derek. And his team. So, in the long story short, 
We actually had a showcase over from the weekend, started from Friday, and thank you, Sean, for putting in the time and effort and actually put everything together and actually categorizing everything and making it look so sweet and awesome inside the showcase room. A hand of applause for everyone. Please, thank you. I gotta thank all my awesome volunteers. Those are over on the table, those who are in the building, and those who are probably somewhere else. I don't know where they are, but thank you guys for dealing with all my BS. <laughs> and personally, I gotta thank my team that's been working alongside with me. I am probably, you know, sporadic as it gets. Shauna, Alina, Mo, thank you guys for being there along the way through this. We wouldn't have this day without you guys. Now, enough of the sappy things. Let's get the, everything moving on. Everyone's probably really anxious to hear exactly the rankings for all these goodies that's over here, provided by Plamod. <laughs> thank Plamod. They gave us all these beautiful kits, trial kits, and prizing, and also, also, all the donations that the charity, and I just got word today, it made me almost faint for two seconds when we heard that there's an MGE X-Strike Freedom that was bidden and sold. Original price was netted around $230, $240. We actually got enough for $600 Whoa. for a full donation for our charity, Meow Foundation. Thank you, everyone. Now, uh, this is enough of me talking. I'm gonna pass this on to Sean, and we're gonna go through the awards ceremony. I will actually recommend, if you do receive your award, please stand up and stay up here, as we will be taking pictures. Thank you. Hey, everyone. So, before we get started, we do have a special message from our uh, mascot, Seth, that I wanna share with everybody. So, uh, let's hear some words from Seth. Oh, oh, What's up? Stop for a second. Uh, Seth, slow down. Oh, it's You're blocking the screen. Sorry. Can you even start it? <laughs> Technical difficulty. <laughs> I am so bad. Oh, I can't see where Thanks for coming to the Don't Bull Showcase Award. We had the absolute joy of looking over all of the Don't Bull Shows and to the contest, and they're all so amazing. You're all winners in my heart. I wish I could keep gushing over them, but I'm going to let Sean take over because he'll be announcing the winners for the Small, Medium, Large, and Junior Awards. Take care, everyone! Oh, so cute. Give it to our mascot, Zach! <laughs> so yeah, we're going to start with the Small Awards. Uh, we had a really good turnout of kits for the small category. Uh, some really impressive ones, too. Um, and I'm excited to announce that the winner of the small award goes to... Come on, Kirsten. There we go. Uh, Liam Millennial Ball of Mayhem and Apollo. With his number one artifact, Nightingale. You guys did not sort this out, did you? HG. It's in his head, but it was not put on So we'll pass this over. Alright. Well, you got lots of things to carry. Aww. Look at Sean, look at me once. Great. Congratulations. Yeah, try not to break it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we're moving on to the medium category. Oh, no. oh it clicked. Was there no medium? Was there no medium special? Yeah. That, why did it jump so far? Ahead? I don't know. I pressed the I pressed the left the left button. <laughs> That's all I did. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties. <laughs> Again, it's fine. Second time doing this. We're okay. Oh, well, we already saw him. We saw him. Oh, don't say it. It's actually on you, back. It doesn't work that way. You can't even see it. I saw it all. 
Uh, this again, our medium award. And it goes to Ephraim Chen with his MG MSN 06S Sinatra. All right, next up is our large category. And it goes to Kevin Hogg with his RG Soccer Team. Next up is a very special category. Uh, we had one entrant who impressed all of us on the team. I want to invite Frederick Pompu up to the front. Pretty much all the work on his bear guy that was in display in the showcase. Everything except knives. Yep. <laughs> so, very impressed with all of us. <laughs> Woo -hoo! How old are you? Say it again. Hawaii. Say, how old are you? How old are you? Four. Yay! Thank you. Thank you very much. you hold this? Hold this? Can we all take the glass? All right, now we move on to the special categories. And those are the ones chosen by the Gundam team. Uh, we all choose based on our tastes of stuff. And uh, we have one category that is just us being a bunch of sarcastic pricks. <laughs> Uh, so, to start, we're going to go with That Ain't No Gundam Award. Uh, that's chosen by me because I like picking things that aren't necessarily Gundams. Uh, and the winner of that category is the one that got spoiled earlier. Uh, Yay! 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 So, for the special categories at the moment, we don't have any statues. Uh, there was a bit of a printing error. Uh, we are working on it at the moment, so we do have your contact info from registering, so if you do win a special category, we will get in touch with you once they're available. Sean? Yeah. So next is I've Seen Better Days Award. That's the one by Mo, and Mo will come up and present it. I got it. I don't know if Mo's going to present it, so. Oh. Are you going to present it? Yeah, you're going to present it. It's your award. <laughs> well, I can do that part. Who is it? Yes. It is Emilio Blanco. Oh, I forgot to do the subtitle, but. Uh, <laughs> it's Olivia Rose. It's Olivia Rose Award. 
Oh, Amelia, yeah. are you in the room? No. No, I guess not. Okay. Well, we'll make sure he gets his prize. No one prize. knows Amelia just announced. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is our This is a Work of Art Award, and that will be presented by Alina. is the Arp to the Teeth Award, which is the Derek's Bad Taste Award. And that goes to the new Gundam Burka Heavy Weapon System Plus Backpack by Clark Poisson. I have counted the number of weapons. It counts. Uh, uh, too, too many. They're too many. <laughs> And up next is our sarcastic award. Oh no, people's choice. I, <laughs> I do. Oh, no. I have this set up ready. Okay, that one somehow got deleted. Uh, so that one somehow got deleted. Uh, but it was our uh, Does It Pay Rent Award, which goes to the largest kit in the showcase. So I'm going to call Kevin Hong back up again, <laughs> and we're going to present him with the smallest kit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. This is the biggest prize there is. Yeah, the biggest prize. All right, everyone, this one's a fun one. People's Choice. I started this around Friday in the morning. I've been constantly updating everything that comes through to Showcase online to the online poll system. Hopefully everyone had a good time, easy to use. I am so sorry for the blurry pictures because they had to downgrade it. It's an app. All right, so. Got the final poll results earlier today after we shut it down. And I gotta say, it was a scary amount. We have over 354 people that was voted across Canada. This was uploaded to every Gumpla team across Canada. And on Facebook, social media, and all over today at OdaFest. So uh, 354 people with 27.1% of the voting, we got Clark Poisson with the new member of with the heavy weapon set. Congratulations. So yeah, thank you everyone who took part in the showcase, and Yay! we'll see you next year. So final closing points, I thank you everyone for participating today, and do not feel discouraged. Anytime you see these wonderful, wonderful people with their pieces they build, every year is a new day. So try your best, do your best, and these kooky categories, hey, you know, you might get a chance in winning this easily. I thank you everyone and every participants that came here. I know a lot of you came from far and wide. I thank you for visiting OdaFest this year. And I hope to see you all again. We are still open until 7 p.m. Please feel free to still keep on building, hang out with us, play some games, and please talk to us. Thank you. All right.